Okay, so we look at Resident Evil 7 Biohazard 21 by 9. Well, not really a 21 by 9 because as it will already be painfully clear to you watching, there is zero ultra wide support. Amazing. Anyway, I'll preface this with the note that I will obviously update this if 21x9 support ever does materialize. However, I'm resigned to skipping the usual ultra-wide support analysis and will skip straight to my thoughts so far on the game. So yes, you will be forced to play this with black bars on the sides, and every time this happens with a title, it just reminds me of how restrictive 16x9 really is. By the way, I've added the gameplay blur effect on the sides of this video in editing, purely as it makes watching 16x9 content more comfortable than black bars. I thought I should just mention in case some of you thought this was the game doing it. Now, what struck me most upon starting the full release is how very unrelated the demo was. The snippet of the house and story etc that we experienced is completely different to the full release, but there are points that have been addressed since the demo that really do improve the experience. Story-wise, this is very intriguing. Bloody scares the hell out of me, but it's absolutely hooked me. You're simply told that you're going to meet a woman in a house, and you play through how you're first entering the house, and then exploring, and then meeting the family, and it's all very fucked up. Like, Jesus. It holds no punches in its graphic content, but it all comes together to create a story that will grab you in a twisted kind of way. I should point out, I've by no means made a huge amount of progress into the game. I refuse to do so until the ultra-wide support is fixed. So my thoughts are only of the first two hours, but I've had a blast so far, even though horror games really aren't my usual scene. Gameplay follows the same lines that we saw in the demo, with crafting, weapon use, and exploration, and it's very intense, yet well executed. You aren't bumbling around clumsily trying to equip various items and the like, it works very well. Graphically, the game is beautiful. There is even a lot of physics I didn't expect to be present, which is a lovely touch to make the environment feel more real. And a big plus over the demo is the performance. At least in my experience, it has been hugely upgraded. I'm running everything on the highest settings, and in this recording, switch between TAA and SMAA, both allowing the continued performance over 70 FPS in all moments. Though there are momentary blips where FPS very briefly stutters, but this is a negligible point if I'm honest. What is clear though is whilst TAA is gorgeous, it does give the image a slight... I don't want to say blur, but the crispness in the SMA gameplay certainly stood over the TAA experience, so just be aware of that. It's not something unique to this game, obviously, but with TAA on the rise, it's always a good idea to read up on the to read up on the various anti-aliasing techniques so you know what you're selecting. All in all, I'm now more than ever interested to see Outlast 2, because whilst playing the two demos, I was convinced that the Outlast 2 one held more promise. However, this is a very good release from what I can tell in the Resident Evil franchise, and it's going to be interesting to see how it stacks up against Outlast 2, though we're going to have to wait till March for that. Anyway, as I say, I'm keeping this short because there is no ultra-wide support to talk about, and I've not played enough of the game to give it an honest review yet, and that won't happen until support is added. But keep your eyes on the channel for any update to the game's 21x9 support, as I'll be sure to let you know when, if, support ever comes. Anyway, give this video a like if you found it helpful, and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21x9, head over to my channel, hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the link's to my Patreon page are in the description. See you later.